So this is a slightly more practical part of the conference because these two people are going to be giving you tips on how to create good content and, here's the important bit, how you might actually get paid for it, how somebody might actually send you on a trip or give you some cash for your content creation. And who doesn't like getting sent away on assignment for free or even getting paid? I know I do. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to, I'm going to, so don't worry, you're not going to do anything much apart from sit still because uh, we're talking about content creation. So the first thing I'm going to do is create some content. So I, I've just got a new phone. I'm very excited by it. So I've just got the new iPhone. So I'm going to take a selfie, okay, with, and this is Yop and Diane. And I'm going to take a selfie with them on stage. You guys are going to be in the background, okay? Now, you don't have to do anything. You just have to sit there. Lady there putting her tea down straight away because she wants to look good. That's fair enough. Now, full disclosure, full disclosure, I'm going to put this photograph. I'm going to create this piece of content. I'm going to put it on my Facebook. I haven't used Facebook in ages, I just realized, by the way. But I'm going to dig out my password, and I'm going to put it on Facebook. Uh, mainly, and this is not a joke, the only person who looks at my Facebook is my mum, who's 88, we bought her a tablet and put the Facebook on, uh, Facebook app on. Cannot get the woman off Facebook. I dare not put Instagram on there because I'm afraid that she will forget to eat. But she keeps track of the entire family on Facebook, so it's very good for that. So I'm going to tell my mum that I was at a conference. So we're going to take a selfie. You guys are going to be in the background. If you don't want to be on my Facebook, and trust me, nobody's looking apart from an 88-year-old woman in England. Um, if you don't want to be on, duck down, put your hand over your face. That's fine. Yup and Diane, can we just take a selfie? This is the piece of content we're going to create. Right, we're not getting you over there, so sorry. And if, if you really <laughs> want to be in, you're going to have to squeeze in. If not, I'm not going to take offense. Okay, ready? Very good. Thank you very much. I take several photos because there's always a blinker. There's always somebody, someone halfway through their tea, like the lady over there was. Okay, now, think about this. I've just created some content, okay? got my phone out, I've taken a picture, I've created content. Now, what am I going to do with that content? I can post it on social media. But wouldn't it be better, I certainly think it would be better, if I could sell it or get someone to notice it and get someone to commission me to create more content for them for a fee? And there's nothing wrong with that. We've all got to make a living. So if we could do that, if we could take our content and get paid for it, make a living out of it, mm -hmm make it useful in that commercial sense, ethically minded, of course, but if you can do all those things, isn't that great? Isn't that better than just putting it on Facebook where your mum sees it? So, I'm now gonna hand you over to Yop and Diane. So, Yop, in particular, has got a presentation he's gonna show us, and at the end, please do ask questions, because these guys have actually created content, They've got, they're living the dream, they've got paid for this content, and they've even been sent abroad on assignment, uh, to create more content for various brands. So, Yop is going to do the presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Yop. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's get some energy going. Here we go. Oh. Whoa. Am I on? Yep. I am, no? You want to hold that, though. Oh, Put it in your pocket. Put it in your pocket. I will. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, content creation piece. You can tag me, no? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I'll <laughs> tag anybody who wants it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a long conversation. Okay, thank you so much for everyone that's still here. It's been a long day for me as well. If your energy level is like this, you know, let's finish strong. Let's do a whoop at the end, okay? Let's do it like this. It's gonna be very easy for you guys. It's not difficult information. Just gonna explain how my life is right now. Together with my girlfriend, it's very like a uh, low bar. So feel free to ask questions after. It can be as practical as you want. Uh, we have no secrets. Uh, and it's gonna be from all the theory from today. We're gonna pull it down a little bit to the earth, and we're just gonna explain what I'm doing. So I'm not an academic at all, I'm a very pragmatic person, I'm a, a freelancer and entrepreneur, together with my girlfriend, Diana, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, let's see, I think we have a nice video. So, wherever you go, in Europe or in the world, we bring a drone, so that's what you're seeing right now. Uh, who we are, I'm Joop from the Netherlands, that's why I have such a strong Dutch accent, if you couldn't tell by now. And this is Diana, my girlfriend, and together we have a company called Active Day Job. Um, influencer is a bit of a term, when you are you an influencer, when you're drinking a smoothie at Eatwell and you WhatsApp your friend come and he comes, did you influence him to come to the Eatwell? I mean, I guess yes, right? 
Um, but we don't see ourselves as influencers so much more as content creators. So three years ago, uh, we moved here to Malta to study, and Alex Gregg Alex Greg was our teacher, and he was so kind to invite us today to talk a little bit. Um, and since then, after graduating uh, from the Bachelor's of Communication, we've been traveling in Europe and making content and making money with it. And I'm gonna explain a bit more on how we do that. Um, so let's see, University of Malta, exactly. Um, I see myself and actually who we are a bit as a product of the information age, right? What we do would not be possible 10 or 20 years ago. I've always said when I was in school, the job that I'm doing later is probably not here yet. It's not existent as of right now. And it's true. It turned out to be true. What we do now would not be possible 20 years ago. Um, let's see, where are we? Oh, yeah. Uh, at the university, we started our Instagram, that's still growing till today. So it's a very important moment for us, I feel like, when we, when we, when we came to Malta. We became producers, so not just consumers of content, of information, but we started producing. And for me, in my mind, it's a very big change, because you can scroll to TikTok every day. I still consume content, right? I'm two hours on YouTube every day. I, I saw my statistics, it's very bad, but you know, if you go to the producing side, you, you see it a bit differently. And when you consume content, then you're like, ah, he made it because of this, or this is not interesting, or I see his agenda here. Or you can still enjoy it, of course. But I can tell you, if you make a lot of content, your consumption goes a bit down, usually, right? You, you put more effort and time in, in creating something, which feels better in the end, I can tell you. Um, so basically, we have been making money in three ways in the last two years. We've been traveling from the Netherlands to Malta, to Italy, to Portugal, to Spain, and now I live together with Diana in the Netherlands for the last month again. Uh, and the three ways that we made money so far are uh, remote working, which is a lot easier since COVID, right? You apply for a job and you say, I want to work remote. And if you're lucky, they say, you can. And then you can go to Thailand and you can live on a Maltese salary or a Dutch salary and you feel like uh, a king over there, for example. Uh, we've done that too. Diana has worked for Google Ads remotely, and I worked as a translator for a company, Dutch, English, and reverse. Uh, and you can go wherever you want, right? And that's what we like. The second uh, way is contract-based. This is me on this little scooter here. I, um, sometimes we don't have enough money or enough uh, opportunities to do a job uh, like uh, from a distance, so we just look uh, online usually on Jobbers with a Y. If you want to work abroad, go to jobbers.com. Uh, and we find a job somewhere, and we go there, and we work there, we save some money, uh, and usually it's part-time, and on the side we still create content. And as you see, even for this job, I was a tour guide on steps, on uh, e-scooters, and I still created content there, uh, because I like it, so I tell my boss, hey, I can create a nice video for you if you want, and well. Here you see it. And the third one, and the most important for us, is uh, freelance work. So you probably know um, about Upwork or Fiverr, the platforms where you can work as a freelancer. Upwork is a bit more professional. Fiverr is good if you have something that takes a little effort, but you can ask some money for it, like, uh, I don't know, photoshopping someone's face, right? You can ask 10 euros and you can do five faces in an hour, you have 50 euros an hour, that can be quite good. But on Upwork, it's a bit more professional, and usually it's like a longer contract that you get with a company. Um, about uh, the freelance lifestyle, we have a bit, uh, I have a bit, uh, uh, we're gonna go a bit deeper in that one because it's the most interesting to us. Um, everything we do, every, every place where we find the jobs that we do is online, so it would only be possible uh, right now, so not 20 years ago, like I said. And one of the, the big ones that we have is our Instagram. That's our focus. I mean, who isn't on Instagram? Can I see a show of, ha of hands who is on Instagram? I'm on Instagram. Everyone's on Instagram, right? You're not on Instagram? Okay, there we go. <laughs> but most people are. There's a lot, a lot of people on Instagram. We choose to focus there because it's quite complicated to learn about how TikTok works and Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and Instagram, right? So we focus on one and we do our job there. So our Instagram, I see more as a portfolio almost. So if I speak to someone and I say, I can create content for you, and they say, well, what can you do? I say, go to my Instagram. 
Then they see it. I think we have 6,000 followers now, so not to, so much as a, like a big influencer, but it says something about your work and about that you understand Instagram at least a little bit, right? So a company will think like, ah, these guys know what they're doing. Um, we have a website as well. It's activedayjob.com. If you want to check it out, feel free. Um, and it's also a portfolio, but also we have blogs there, like the top 10 things to do on Malta or in Luca or in Pisa. And that drives organic traffic to our website because people want to know these kind of things. So they Google it, they find our website, and then they see these guys create content. So it's like um, you cast a white net, not everyone there is going to be a client. But sometimes people go, come to our website um, and they approach us with, can you make some content for us? Like this one, it's an uh, e-scooter as well. It's Farla, it's called. It's not uh, one of those shared ones, it's just one that you buy, it's like a thousand euros. Euros or something, sorry. Uh, and they send, us, they send one to us uh, in trade for a couple of photo shoots, um, and they paid some money as well for it. And the third one, uh, again, what I said is uh, the platforms to use as a freelancer. So this, I think, was a Fiverr uh, client. He sent us a little, uh, like a cooling pouch. We were in Tuscany back then, and so we have some uh, sparkling white wine on the, the grape fields in Tuscany, right? So they send us the product, we make the content, they pay us the money. And we get to see Tuscany, which is uh, not a punishment <laughs> at all. Let's see here. Um, so we've been doing this for two years now, and we started to notice that it's like uh, almost an upward spiral. So you start traveling, and then you start approaching some companies, and you say, I've been doing this for two years. Right now I'm in beautiful Malta. Do you want a photo shoot for your bikini or something, right? So they send you to the bikini, and then you can do your work, and then you're done. If I live in the Netherlands for 20 years, which I've done, right, I wouldn't even come up in my head, like, what can I do here? We did it once, and they sent us beach towels in the winter in the Netherlands. I was like, yeah, okay, that's great. So we sent an email back, like, uh, can you pay a ticket to the south of Spain? And they did, so we went to the south of Spain, and we created some good content there, which is a nice solution, but not, not all companies will do that, of course. Um, it's, for us, it's just a, a cool way of living the life that we want in a sustainable way, so we can go from place to place and make enough money to go to the next one. Right? So it's more a way of supporting the life that we want. I don't see it like I have to go everywhere to do my work. So it's, like it's the other way around. Um, so let's get even more practical. This is our Instagram feed, and you can see even in these uh, 15 or 18 uh, pictures, we have a, a few collabs uh, with an outdoor jacket on top. On the bottom, we were in Lisbon. Uh, Lipton paid us a couple hundred euros to do uh, basically one photo holding a, a Lipton uh, bottle uh, in front of uh, like a famous thing in Lisbon, so we did. Um, and on the left, the content creation, uh, we do this so people that visit our Instagram can see that we do create content, so it's like a little behind the scenes one. Um, also, it's like I feel if I follow someone and he only posts products, very annoying, right? I follow you for you. If, if every post is like uh, this jacket and this uh, face mask, I don't know. It's like, uh, okay, okay, you're making a bit too much money, I don't want to follow you anymore. So I, it, it feels like that to me, so we don't do that, you know. Uh, and another thing that has worked well for us is finding a real niche. So first we started as photographers, which sounds kind of cool, like I'm a photographer, I can do anything, but what do you have as a photographer? You have real estate, uh, beauty, you have models, you have for clothing, you have a lot of things. So you don't know which clients to seek, and if a client finds you, it's hard to explain what you do. You cannot show a real estate agent with, with a photo like this, like I can do it, it doesn't work like that. So a niche eliminate, eliminates both those problems, right? So now we are an outdoor travel photographers or videographers, that's what we are. So companies that want content about that, they will find us and then we all know this is the right place to go, right? If you want a real estate photographer, there's probably a thousand more that can do it better than us, so why, why will we do it? Uh, and we can find some clients, it's not enough to sustain us all the time, that's why we still do contract-based work uh, or uh, remote work. Um, so about people that approach us, I don't know how much followers you guys have, but uh, a normal Gen Zers here already has like a thousand followers just from your friends. 
basically, right? And I think, especially with girls, you get a lot of uh, messages like the right one. So super generic, this uh, person sends to me, hello, beautiful, like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, and we are actually a couple, and when they say like uh, singular stuff, you know, they didn't even check our Instagram, they just send it to us. Um, and usually I go to a page like this, like pink and whatever this is, and usually it's a small page with 50 followers. They are all just people that get a bit of affiliate money if they get someone to buy something there. So this is also for me uh, a red sign, you know. So we get a lot of these, I'm sure you guys do as well. I don't know if you ever picked up on one. We did it, I think, one or two times, and found out real quick this is not a way to make money. Usually, um, they send you a free product, but the shipping cost is 20 or 30 euros, and you get a crappy something, right? That's the way they make money. Um, and sometimes they do send you something, but they don't pay money to create content, so it's, it's fun that I now have a backpack, but doesn't pay the bills, right? So we have to up it a little bit. So on the left, uh, we have a company, Everfund, they found our website. And I can already tell, you can probably too by the mail, that's a bit more serious. Yeah, at least checked our Instagram or website, or he knows what we do, right? So we responded and ended up working with them, and actually, uh, we are here this weekend for this conference, and this weekend we're doing some content creation for them as well, so we took a backpack with us. So this is an ongoing thing, just from one email. So you can see it can be very quick and easy sometimes. Um, so it's not all good. <laughs> it's not uh, as easy or as safe as just uh, living at home and working at a company, like most of my friends in the Netherlands do, or my family, right? Um, we have a lot of pressure to keep things going. If you stop, the, the clients stop coming as well. And the followers drop off as well. So it's a lot of like constant pressure to keep going. Uh, for me, it's, it's good because I'm a lazy guy. I only do this stuff when I need to. So it's good that there's a little bit pressure behind me. Uh, but it's good to keep it in mind because you can lose yourself. You can spend, we know people that spend eight or 10 hours every day on Instagram because they want to be an influencer. And you can see the mental health and even the physical health is not, uh, it's not going like this, you know, it's not good. Uh, even moving around, it's our choice, I know, but it's quite stressful. Um, it is easy, easy these days, though. like if I want to live in uh, Malta for a few months, I can go on Airbnb. I'm going to pay a lot of money in Malta, <laughs> okay? but uh, it's easy to do. You can do it somewhere that's cheaper as well. If I say to my parents, I'm going to live in Lisbon, Lisbon for a few months, my father asks, how do you find a house? And I'm like, what do you mean, how do you find a house? I go on Airbnb or I go on Facebook, some marketplace group or whatever, right? How, what do you mean? It's easy. Um, and there's a lot of comparing. I, I guess you guys recognize this one, right? You see someone on Instagram that's richer, hotter, fitter, I don't know. We see this a lot, so we are in kind of in a bubble. We, we speak a lot with other travel content creators, and we're always looking like, why is their reel taking off and ours is not? You know, why are they making more money and we not? Why are they invited to this hotel and we are not? So it, the comparing, maybe it can motivate you, but it's not like the healthiest thing to always be doing, you know. Also, where, where does it end? You know, there's no end there. <laughs> it's not a game you can win. Um, okay. I think that's, that was, that's my last one, yeah, exactly. I wanted to end with a nice quote. Who doesn't like a nice quote? It's about <laughs> knowing of how to make use of online tools without being overloaded with too much information, like it or not, is an essential ingredient to personal success in the 21st century. If you have a question, uh, could be about this, right? Do you agree? I, for me, it's true. For me, it rings true. But my, I have four sisters that all live in the Netherlands. They have a house and kids and all that. They don't use a lot of online tools or information to do their work. They get fine. They, they get by fine. Is he the one that's a doctor's assistant. He doesn't do what I do. She doesn't need all those skills. But for me, it feels like I need to be like on top of Instagram, I need to know how it works, otherwise I don't have clients, you know. So for me, this is very true. I think for Gen Z, it's even more true, even maybe they don't even realize it, maybe it's normal for you guys. Um, but maybe for some people, it's not true. That's why I wanted to, uh, to end with this. So thank you so much for, you, for your attention. Uh, please feel free to ask any question.
Thank you. You're, so uh, it's been a long day, and we've all <laughs> learned stuff. And whenever I learn something new, something old <coughs> comes out of my head. So uh, we have to ration that. So very happy to take some questions from the floor. We won't do it for too long, because as I say, it is the end of a long day. But does anybody have any questions? Lady here. Um, I was just asking, what is your niche again? I mean, there are a lot of people on Instagram who travel. There are a lot of people who do, you know, are outdoor a lot. So what is it exactly? That was me. That was good. I keep talking. Am I uh, on? I am? Oh, good. Um, so we are in this niche the whole time. We are only seeing other people that also don't have a home and, and travel around and work. Uh, maybe they live in a van, they live the van life. So that's, that's the niche where we live in. Uh, for clients also, it's sometimes a bit confusing, right? So outdoor clothing brands or a backpack or maybe a winter jacket, they, they get a feeling like, oh, these guys, they can do it, they, they can make pictures for us. So that's what we do. One of our clients is uh, called Four Monster, it's a Chinese company. And they uh, sell outdoor products on Amazon and their whole website is just content that we created for them. So it's just outdoor towels, like yoga mats, picnics mats, stuff like that. So it's more like when you like to go outdoors, you like to go outside, what, what do you need there? That's, that's going to be our niche. You agree? Yes. Yeah. And what makes you different than other people who travel and promote outdoor things? Because I also I thought a lot about creating content, and they always say you need to find something that makes you different than others. And what would you say is that in your case? Um, I think we don't really have to be super different from all because there are enough companies and enough products for yeah for everyone. But also I think we have a background in graphic design and communication and photography, so that makes it easier to, to really create this content and to travel. We don't, really, we don't only travel, but we also did studies in how to, to make it work. Would yeah. you agree? <laughs> yeah, no, I would. It's also not like uh, we are trying to get to a million followers, and uh, then you have to be different, right? Then you have to really know what you're doing with your Instagram. But what else? We create content for other people, and Diana is a professional photographer, and I'm a experienced video maker so that's what we bring to the table then right like we can create content for you not that we are so special as, as, as personalities but more we can offer you so that's a, a different way of making money with instagram basically it's just getting clients via instagram not so much getting money to post something on us instagram ourselves so there's a there's a difference there too okay lady here thank you Uh, well, thank you very much. It was uh, really inspiring. And I wanted to ask you if you do it as a full-time job, uh, creating content, this is your only job, and have you have all kind of maybe concerns about the future? Maybe social media won't be that strong in a few years is something that I would like to know. Me again. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, not always full-time, because we don't have enough clients for that. But if I have a job, I'm starting in the Netherlands in a few weeks for a few months to work, also as a content marketeer. So I'm still going to be creating content, just not for uh, my own clients, just for, uh, yeah, as an employee, basically, right? So in that way, yeah, we have been doing it full-time, but not uh, the, the fun examples that you just saw, like photographing a, a towel. We don't have enough to do that full-time. It pays maybe like a few hundred euros uh, for a day for two people. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. the, only, the only way to make money like that is to do like weddings or stuff. It pays a bit more. Um, and for the future, no, no, there's no, no worry there. <laughs> no, content is going to up, 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 up. Yeah. Okay, so the gentleman just before, sorry, lady there and then the gentleman there, I think, wanted to ask a question. Just before we do that, we're going to get you involved because you've been far too quiet. So I'm going to ask you a direct question. Yes. Photography. 
So you're a professional photographer. Obviously, we've heard about your Instagram account. So give us some quick thoughts on photography on Instagram. What works the best for you? What do you think, what kind of images, bearing in mind what you guys do, and you travel, uh, and you show lifestyle, and you show products, and you show yourselves as well. What kind of photography works the best on Instagram for you? Um, well, I know that people on Instagram, when you have a picture with someone inside, that always works the best. So when you only have a product, it can be a super nice picture from a backpack with a mountain in the background. It can be nice, but it doesn't work as good as you have a person with the backpack. And um, yeah, we always use ourselves, not because we are great models or anything, but it just works better. And it also, we wanted to keep it real. We are just, we like to be outdoor. And yeah, we don't see ourselves really as models, but people don't mind because it's just ourselves enjoying the nature and companies like that. I think you're both delightful, so I think you both could be models. <laughs> but what you're talking about is authenticity. People see real people using a product. It makes it more an authentic experience. Yeah, it's more real. When you see someone really using the backpack and hiking in some mountains with the backpack, it's nicer to see than just yeah the, the backpack itself. Okay, very good. So there you go, people. Put people in your photographs, that'll help out. Maybe there with a the microphone. I, I, I've been telling my, my grandparents to do that for ages. They just take a picture of where they've gone on holiday with no one actually in it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. I'll use that for feedback for them as well. Uh, one, how awesome your, jo your job is or um, your experience is. Like, I'm sure it's as you, you go online, it's everyone's dream, right? They, they want to be able to travel and be paid to do it, which is why, obviously, you're here telling us. Uh, I'm not going to say you, you, this, this may be a question that you might not, not know the answer to, because I think that's the whole point of this conversation right now. But um, do you think, because there's been a criticism, I'm not saying a criticism to you, but there has been a uh, suggestion that people do the, the van life or the nomad life because buying a house is really expensive. Like the, the ideals we used to have are maybe less attainable than they were. Like having a mortgage or having like roots or having, you know, uh, you know, all those different things that were different ideals for maybe our parents, right? So what, one of my questions is, is one, do, do you personally strive to have that maybe at one point, like have a house or have some home? And I'm not saying you don't have a home, but you know what I mean? Actually be, be less of a nomad? Or um, do you see that as this is the old days, that's the past, that's not what we do anymore, that's not something I look forward to. I actually enjoy this life and this life is perfect. I think both maybe for us. At some point we want to have a house, but... Uh, maybe also because now we, we pay rent every time and it's better to buy a house so you can put money inside it, but then maybe we would rent it out. And then a few months per year we, we're going to travel, but then we have a place to, for our stuff and yeah, it's better to have a house than to rent all the time. Do you like the flexibility of this lifestyle? Because obviously you don't have a place to, to, to get bored with because you're traveling so much. But on the other hand, you have, like you've just said, you've got someone to come back to. But the, at the moment, this stage in your life, the flexibility really appeals to you both. I, I think that's fair to say. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's worth the sacrifice. And, and what do you think, how does that compare with your, your peers, your friends? Are you finding more people your age are into the flexible lifestyles or not? What, what do you think? Well, not so much from the Netherlands, not my old friend group, they don't all do this, but when we are somewhere to work, then we meet people that also do this, like people from Germany or Italy or whatever. So then the bubble is not only online, but also physical. I only speak to other digital moments, <laughs> basically. So that's, that's where we make friends, uh, it's usually for a very short time though. So we are good in making friends for a short time, basically. So you, get it, you adapt, basically. You can always slide into their DMs at some point and reconnect, I'm sure it'll exactly. be fine. Um, so yeah. gentlemen <laughs> there with the mic, and let, I'll come back to you, madam. You hear me? Okay, perfect. Can you tell us more about the first uh, collaboration? How, how did it start? Did you go to a company or did a company come to you? I think uh, in the beginning it's hard to get uh, collaboration. I think that was for Monster, right? It was uh, one of these outdoor brands that Joppel was telling. 
that we got the towels and then we went for, to Spain. I think that was the first one and they uh, sent us a message on Instagram. And first we thought it was like, like weird or fake, but then we thought, yeah, we have nothing to lose. But then they actually were super nice, and now three years later we still work with them like every month or every two months. Okay. Yeah, my first content creation ever was uh, a wedding for some good money at least. Yeah, yeah, it's a good stepping stone, but most people don't uh, keep doing it for a long time. Okay, lady there. Oh no, we're gonna go there, and then we will come back to you. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm just really fascinated on how you started your journey as like remote working. Um, I would really like to work uh, remote working, but I think it's very limiting here in Malta. So I'm really scared to take that step and I have no idea where to look, where to look for it, how to even start. So I would like more maybe if you can share your experience on how you do content creation, but then you also have the remote working on the side. How do you, where do you look for it and how do you do it? Thank you. Uh, my last remote working was, uh, I worked at a company physically, then I told them I am gonna move away, uh, but they were happy with how I was doing my work so I can make a little uh, agreement that I keep doing it remotely, right? But via Upwork, this platform, it depends on what you do. If uh, I can be a video editor, for example, uh, there's a lot of, of companies there looking for video editors. So they will just send you an assignment for uh, this many hours per week or something. And then you can do it. Uh, and for me, I don't like to work at home. So usually I go to a co-working place. And I remember when we were in Malta, uh, Coco Hub was uh, the co-living, co-working space. I don't know if it's still around, but we went there a few times too. Yeah, and we used Yobbers. I don't know if you know it. It's um, it's an online website, and they have like uh, yeah jobs all over in Europe. And with some of them, you can you get the job, but you also get a house. So that's super easy. They they just arrange everything for you, and then you go to Lisbon, for example, and then they also have an apartment for you. So then it's super easy to to move away. Just to add into that myself, I've um, recently picked up some freelance work and I was quite amazed because I just uh, hit up a load of people that I knew on LinkedIn uh, and just reached out to people. I reached out because it's not a great word. Uh, I contacted, I wrote to uh, people and just said, hey, I'm looking for work. Do you have anything going? And some people came back and said, yes, actually, we have gaps. And so taking that first step, don't wait to see an advert actually identify people and places you'd like to work at and approach them and say, I can do this, I'm available, do you have anything going? Because actually, of late, touch wood, I found that to be quite fruitful. So contact people, or oh, she's thought of another question. Go for but, it. But do you, like, do you send them your portfolio? Or because I fear that some people might think you're a scam or something, that's why I find it um, a bit scared to approach people, like me approaching someone at first? Like, two, so, two-page CV, and I, I'm not a creative in the visual sense, so I'm a, I'm a writer, but still, I think a two-page document with a short, heavily spell-checked, uh, short message won't come across as a scam. If it's badly written, and if it's a dodgy format, uh, the, the attachment is a dodgy format, and if, and people do this, people make their CVs pink and things like this. They do it. They make different colors. I mean, some people put photos on. I wouldn't do that. Definitely, I would never get employed. But you have a standard approach. You have a Word document, two pages, and a short, polite, spell-checked approach, and just hit lots of people up. Rewrite it each time slightly so it sounds fresh, is my advice. But I've got results. People have not had job adverts, but they've given me work because I've made that sort of straightforward, simple approach. So I have found that in my experience, I have found that it works. Lady here. Um, I would like to know, are you able to save money or do you live rather paycheck to paycheck? Uh, no. 
I try to save money because eventually we also want, like we said before, to buy a house or maybe a camper. So um, sometimes we work a lot, like too much. <laughs> for example, last summer I was in Mallorca and I was working at a company for five days a week. And next to that we had our own yeah, work. So it was like 50, 60 hours a week work sometimes, too much, but I could save a lot of money because of that. So then we can move somewhere else or we can actually do something with it. So time management is, is a factor in your lifestyle? Yeah, sometimes we work too much and then after like now we have a few months, it's more quiet. And then uh, I think in a few months we are, we are going to work too much again, but then it, it goes like this all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some waves. Yeah. Get in the work. Excellent. Lady there. Hi. Um, so, two things. One, if I can actually add to the remote working um, conversation, because I'm a social media freelancer, um, and it was really challenging for me in the beginning. I was really, really scared to go on my own. I had a really great high-tech job. I was doing freelance work on the side, but I was way too worried to actually like make the leap to be completely self-employed. And the funny thing is, once you do it, things just happen. Once you like really believe in yourself and you're telling people that you're doing it, people like random people started like recommending me to different companies, to different things. I've signed clients that I never thought I'd ever work for um, as a freelancer. So sometimes it's just a matter of like faith to like hard work, but also just like understanding that it'll like you can get a job afterwards if all else fails. You can go back to work. Um, so you just have to like be brave and trust yourself to do it sometimes, and it's really scary. Um, so on that note, my question is, um, can you guys shed any light on actual social media strategies that you um, would want to share? Because what growth looked like, especially for my clients in the last couple years, does not look the same anymore. <laughs> and it's really challenging because people want numbers, people want to see things, but um, organic growth is just not the same anymore. And so you can make a beautifully edited TikTok or reel or you know, have the best image ever and it's not gonna gain the same sort of traction that it could used to have gotten years ago. And so even the way that you want to put out information, um, it's a really huge challenge right now on these social media platforms because it's so oversaturated, because there's so much more competition than ever before. So do you guys have any advice on how to actually execute and implement content that'll reach people? I think we have the same problem, yeah. It was three years ago when we started Instagram, it was so much easier than now. I think the last year it really changed everything and it's super hard. And we also struggle with that, but for us it's maybe easier because we we make content for companies. We don't only have our Instagram. And companies always want content. They always want something for their website or on their own Instagram. And I also do I also manage social media channels for other companies. And what I find uh, what what works best there is to ask other influencers to yeah, to say something about the products or anything. And it doesn't really help to grow on the Instagrams, but it does help to let people buy something on the web shop or anything, if they have a web shop or they sell anything. When, well, that's what I see when I look into the analytics. I see people really go to the website. They don't like the pictures anymore on Instagram, but they visit the web shop. So, yeah, it's important to just show content even though it's not working as good as two years ago anymore. Yeah, but I feel you fully. <laughs> it's a it's challenge so always. Annoying. The yeah. most <laughs> annoying thing is spending hours to create something beautiful and then 10 people watch it. Yeah. That's the worst feeling. And then you make some selfie and uh, 10,000 people act like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's such a weird, weird uh, environment sometimes. But one thing is always the same since the beginning is consistency. consistency is key. Yeah, every day something is the best. Doesn't have to be top notch always. Yeah. Made it right there. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. Thank you both so much. That's been fascinating. I have one question, which comes from, it can only come from somebody my age. 
If you could quantify it, and I know it's difficult because you're travelling, so try and eliminate or take out um, the fact that you're away, because you're not away. You're tr in your minds, you're travelling. You've taken your home with you. My question is, how many hours a week, roughly, do you think you work? Does that, is that even a question that makes sense to what you do? <laughs> what's the worst, what's the best? <laughs> The worst is going to be like 70 and the best is going to be zero. I and think. how often are the 70s and how often are the zeros? <laughs> uh, the last month we lived on Mallorca and uh, I worked uh, there full time as a, as a, like a locally based and next to it we did some, uh, well, quite a bit content creation. So I think it was maybe 60 hours. Yeah. Uh, that was for uh, four months straight uh, before. Yeah. But it's on Mallorca, so... You can still go swim if you try. But now <laughs> maybe it's ten hours a week. Yeah, now it's really low, so yeah, I really like that. So that's better. <laughs> okay, thank you. As a former journalist, Jeanette, I think yes. you've, I think you're thinking seventy hours. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> It's part, like a part-time job. Part-time. <laughs> he took the words out of my mouth. About to say that. Uh, any other? Lovely to have so many questions for from you all. Thank you very much for that. Any other questions? Okay. No other questions. I'm going to ask one final one, and then we are done. Guys, thank you both very much for your time. Sure. Lovely to hear from you. Great insights there. Just my final uh, thought on this, my question I'd like to ask you. So we've heard about it's a bit unpredictable. So you get to travel, but then you get to do 70-hour weeks. And then sometimes you get money, and sometimes you don't. Mm. It's a bit up and down. But if, can you both give me a quick word on why? Why do you do this lifestyle? Why do you like to live like this? I think for me, I grew up in a super small village and I saw people grew up in the village and they bought a house and they lived for 50 years in the same house. That always seemed super boring to me. Maybe it's nice, I don't know, but for me, it, I, I need some more. I like to travel and see other cultures and I like to meet other people and other travelers. Just adventure. And it, it really fits in the content we create. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah I want to say something like funny, but it's, uh, yeah, like I, I don't want to grow up or something, but it's really like when I grew up, I saw a lot of people working full-time jobs uh, because they had to, and uh, I saw it didn't make them happy. So I, I, don't, I don't want this for myself. So that's why we do it, because we can right now, we don't have any kids or uh, a mortgage or something, so we wanted to try it, and we're doing it. Excellent. Well, I think you're both actually very brave to be going out, hitting the road and, uh, and making your dreams come true. It's quite inspirational. So thank you both very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.